What's up guys, today I figured uh, I'd make a video with regard to helping out the massive amount of new influx of players that'll be jumping aboard from Battlefield 1 because of the big hype train associated with this game. I found that Battlefield 1 does have a little bit of, or Battlefield series does have a little bit of background information that new players should know that isn't really properly taught uh, in, say, video t or breakdown tutorials. So I figured I'd do my best in trying to give uh, basic info that most people jumping into the brand new Battlefield series should have at least a basic knowledge of before they jump into the Battlefield or they're trying to get better at the beginning aspects of the game. Because I know so many people from Call of Duty are going to be jumping into this, so many people from even non-FPS games are going to be jumping in, and knowing the basics of the Battlefield franchise would give them quite a bit of a head start to not only help themselves as individuals, but also help the teams that they're going to be on. So I'll, give down a ba I'll get down the basics, and then hopefully we'll go into more advanced tips. It won't be thorough, I'm sure I'm going to miss a few, uh, and the more advanced stuff I'm going to cover in more fleshed out tutorials later on down the road, so if you're interested in those, have a look at those when I post them or subscribe and stick around. Anyway, let's get started. The first point you should know with Battlefield as a whole, in terms of FPSs, Battlefield is a much more team-based game than probably most FPS games you faced, with the exclusion of uh, the likes of Overwatch or something like that, uh, where you actually have to pick classes that align together. No matter how new you are, or if you've owned every single Battlefield game in existence and consider yourself one of the better players on this earth, communicating with your squad mates and running with a team for a numbers advantage is going to get you better results in every aspect of the game you can imagine, from kill-death ratio to total score to continually winning matches. Uh, communicating with your squad, see those five guys right next to the minimap there? That's your squad. The green dots, those are your squad mates. If you huddle up and attack objectives together as we sort of are trying to do here, you're going to have much better success. If you get isolated from your squad, the blue guys, they're not in your squad, but they're also your teammates, stick with them. The lone wolf game, if you're a good player, will get you success at times, but a lot of the time if you're pushing an objective where a team is sitting there, if you can be a god player, you're going to get squashed eventually. To help yourself and your team, get familiar with a mechanic that's called spotting. On PC, it's clicking the Q key. On PS4, it's L1. And on Xbox, it's the right bumper. What this does is highlight uh, the enemy on the minimap, and it puts an icon over his head. The icon that comes up over his head is the class the character is playing, so it gives you quite a bit of decent information with regard to how that firefight's going to go. So say, for example, like I'm a sniper here. I'm not really using a scope, but I'm playing the role of sniper here. If I spot an assault player, I know that I have the advantage at range. I don't want to close ground. I don't want to let him close ground on me. Everyone else on your team will also see this icon over that player's head. So not only is he going to stick out quite prominently for a few seconds, but you have an idea of how the encounter should play out in terms of range. You should also spot vehicles all infantry objectives even if you're this especially if you're the squad leader because you're going to get yourself and your team more points when you capture that objective and in general just anything you're suspicious of if you see something that looks like an enemy and even if it's just a rock spot it see if it's actually an enemy see if something comes up now in battlefield 4 to break down the classes further because I, I addressed this briefly you have four classes to choose from no matter what anyone tells you uh, some people might say you can only be effective with one class or the other. That's not right. It's wrong. Full stop. It just depends on how you play the class. A sniper sitting in the spawn is going to be terrible. Uh, a support player who doesn't drop ammo, who rushes the objective and gets like a, a 2 to 10 kill death ratio in a rust match. Just as bad if not worse. It all depends on how you play the class. All have weaknesses if not played with a team goal in mind, so make sure you use all the gadgets associated with these classes and think strategically. Think with a team-based mindset, not as a lone wolf. The assault class is the first class, and it's the anti-vehicle class. Everything associated with it allows you to take out vehicles or break down walls to breach into a building. The weapon associated with it are SMGs and shotguns that really emphasize close quarters engagements, so make sure you stay at these range if you want good success, and if you're the enemy, or if you see an enemy with that class, stay back. 
because he can't do anything to you at further range. The medic class is exactly as it suggests. It's your job to heal yourself and your teammates, and you can revive teammates when they die. Uh, the weapons associated with this class are best suited for medium and sort of slightly longer range combat, but not quite sniper range combat. So other than being matched up against a sniper, you'll be best suited if you stay out of close quarters engagements for the most part. I think they may have a shotgun they can equip too, so that would go the other way if you could actually equip uh, a shotgun. You might be able to stay in close quarters. The support class is best designed for close to medium range encounters because they have large magazines and pretty decent fire rates. They have large magazines which help provide supporting fire for flanking or relocating and for spraying down large groups of unsuspecting enemies. The equipment is best geared to help support friendly armor because they have the mechanic perk and to re uh, the, uh, the uh, mechanic gadget and, they, and to resupply fellow teammates. Spam the resupplies as teammates can always use the ammo. Lastly, the scout class, which of course is always going to be the hot button one. It's basically the sniper class. It's best designed for medium to longer range encounters, although the more skilled players can use it in close quarters aggressive sniping. The equipment is meant to help spot enemies and provide supporting fire from a distance. Make sure you use all this equipment to spot, because there's even the spotting flare. You get two of them per round. Just shoot it at the objective. You've already done something to help the team immediately. Uh, because if you spot everything, when the entire battlefield's worth of enemies are lit up and you have an idea of where the enemy is and where they're going to be coming from, it's going to make the whole team's life so much easier. And, I, and let me tell you, I've played Sniper a lot over the years. My channel got a bit big because of it. Uh, snipes, uh, playing the role of a good sniper that spots everything and kills enemies from a distance is such a thankless job if you do the job well. If you do it bad, you'll get critiqued big time. I'll be making full-length tutorials for uh, tanks, vehicles, and the scout class in general, so stay tuned for those. They're simply way too complex to address in a basic video, uh, but you can practice those on an empty server to get a feel for them before jumping in. Just bear in mind that if you're playing as a vehicle, you have to keep well aware of your surroundings. Um, try to stay with a group of infantry players when you're pushing up, because if you get isolated and all of a sudden two or three assault guys are bombarding your tank, it disables the track, you're done. If you stay alongside your teammates, they might be able to deal with some of those guys, and you can continually push up. But all the vehicles and sniping I'm going to make a, several different videos for. Too complex for a basic video. So in terms of more general tips, like I was saying earlier, drop medic and ammo bags if you're medic and support and do it all the time. Even if you're not around an area with tons of teammates and there might be one guy just around the corner, drop the ammo bag or medic bag anyway uh, because that teammate might end up in that area after you leave. He might use a house for cover as you're leaving that house. He could use that ammo. He could use uh, that health. Why wouldn't you? Because you get you get points for it. Take advantage. As stated previously, if you want to win more and level up faster to get used to better weapons and gear and get used to and get better weapons and gear, play the objective. If you're playing Conquest, make sure you rush the flags and maybe stick around for a couple of seconds after to make sure that no one else is immediately going to try and take that flag. If you're playing Rush, uh, Make sure, like, I like to play the middle ground a lot, Rush. Uh, I won't directly rush the MCOM, but I'll try and clear the dozens of enemies that are constantly throwing themselves at the MCOM. So you can play the middle ground, too. But at the same time, you can also be the guy that directly goes toward rushing and planting the MCOM. Uh, or you can be the guy that uh, throws himself on it and defends it. Rush has a lot of different ways you can play it. It's You don't have to immediately arm the MCOM all the time to be considered a successful Rush player. Uh, you get most amount of points playing the objective through Rush for arming, so if you're aiming for points, just throw yourself at it. Uh, but winning is uh, winning Rush, I found, is th has to be a perfect balance of people sort of clearing the areas around the MCOMs and then people actually planting them. If you have a mismatch of balance between people that like staying back and people that like pushing it completely without the people behind clearing the area for them, then it just becomes a mess and the other team just mows you down and that's it. Next, you should really vary up your style based on the map that you're playing. 
the ebb and flow of a single game and how your opponent reacts. Just because you see one map come up doesn't mean that you should always think, oh, okay, I'm going to be a sniper the entire match. You may start great as one class too, based on the ebb and flow, but if the enemy changes tactics, you may find yourself dying a lot more or the, the game flow might change and you're suddenly losing. So, see what the enemy is doing and find the best way to counter it. I'll be making more quick tip videos to this to address that, so stay tuned. But uh, the, the, the general premise I'm going for here is don't sort of stay complacent with one class if things are going awry. If the enemies all of a sudden have a stockpile of vehicles that are pushing, maybe you should switch to assault and try and take them out. Uh, if the enemy's trying to be stealthy, uh, maybe playing as a sniper, spotting them and taking them out from afar and tipping your teammates off to them trying to flank is the best way to go. So just be alert, and if you die, try and find a class that best optimizes to counter the enemy team. Next one, for the love of God, use your mini-map. Use it a lot. Look on the bottom there. Uh, it highlights everything. You'll see teammates on it. You'll see enemies on it. You'll see the individual map layout, like in terms of like being able to hide behind this cover. You'll see the streets. You'll see the buildings. Uh, you'll see where the objectives are. It, everything. It's your most powerful tool, and looking at it often will absolutely make you a better player by leaps and bounds. Uh, and I mean, believe me, I've had to go out of my way to say this because I'm sure based on seeing lots of people that I've killed, there's no way they were looking at the minimap when I killed them. Because they, they, they didn't even know I was there. And the minimap probably would have told them. This goes doubly so, this next point, if you're coming over from the Call of Duty franchise, but don't let kill death ratio bother you. If you start thinking of that as be making it a top priority, I guarantee you you're going to end up being far too passive of a player. Ironically enough, it sometimes becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. When you go out of your way to try and protect your kill-death ratio, you end up doing worse because you make passive mistakes and you think, okay, maybe I might not take that shot because then the, the enemy team might not might know where I am now. Uh, or, in the opposite way, you become so passive that you, you're an insignificant part of the match. You might finish 5-0, and oh, but you didn't do anything. You didn't take objectives. Um, you were, you, no one even knew you were there. So, playing smart and aggressively once you've got the fundamentals of aiming, positioning, map knowledge, and all of that sort of basic knowledge skill set will absolutely help you build your skill set quickly. Playing continually passive all the time will keep you at that same low level of skill. But don't, I'm not saying blindly rush around. I'm saying build the mechanics slowly and then incorporate more aggression into it. Based on that, though, it sounds a little bit contradictory to my last point. At least when you start, you'll want to take the game at a slower pace than, say, Call of Duty or other FPS games. In those games, you could get away with sprinting, especially around corners, jumping around the air, because everyone was running at that pace. So it was a less forgiving uh, it was a more for, uh, more forgiving environment if you made those little mistakes. Battlefield's not like that. Uh, if you're sprinting endlessly around corners, or you're running down a long street, uh, such as the ones that you're seeing in front of me, if someone's at the end of that street, it's you're dead. There's nowhere to take cover, and most of the time, uh, people in Battlefield will absolutely plan out where they want to engage you. So, be ready for surprise encounters, based on that when you move around by putting your reticle where you think the enemy will pop up. Have a goal in mind when you travel as well. It will help better prepare you for what you'll encounter. Aimless running without having a goal in mind or without having some sort of backup plan as to where you want to take cover if someone rushes you basically means instant death. That's basically FPS 101 especially for Battlefield though. Next, make a note to learn the maps. This one is a general tip, I know, for all FPS games, uh, but I think it needs to be said anyway. Uh, the knowledge of maps gives you an idea of what to expect from the enemy, and it gives you a pretty good idea of how to counter it. Knowing that a team that captures a flag with an elevation will give you an advantage means that that should be the priority flag that you try and take. Know the high traffic spots and the hot spots per map, that way you can either try and flank the enemy or you can engage in those hotspots to try and take that very needed flag or MCOM. 
Next, when you see gunfights, try to shoot at enemies first and make sure you try and shoot at enemies that don't know you're there. You should win most of these gunfights with that advantage, at least providing you're accurate. Make sure you have some cover around or preferably you're already behind some cover before you engage the enemy. If it looks like you have the advantage, shoot. If it looks like uh, someone spotted you first or is shooting at you first and it looks like you're probably going to lose that encounter, back out of that gunfight. Have an escape route or two before you back out, a corridor to your flank or something say directly behind you uh, because that way it gives you a better chance of survival. Engaging in a gunfight without a backup plan gets you killed if you suddenly get shot and you're like, Oh, I have to retreat, I have to retreat. You run directly into a wall and he just mows you down and laughs. <laughs> Believe me, it happens quite a bit. Recover your health and either try that engagement again, but if he has superior positioning, retreat and find somewhere else to go. It's not worth taking an encounter where you're at the disadvantage from the get-go. So remember, sometimes the best gunfight is the one you never actually engaged in. That's the basics, okay? Uh, I know it's a lot to take in, uh, and I'm going to do far more videos breaking down more complex things, but... And if you feel I've missed something very important for the basic parts of the Battlefield game, make sure you uh, let me know in the comments. If you enjoyed the video, leave a like. Consider subscribing to see more of those intricate videos coming out soon, or if you just want to support me as a guy that's just making these videos. Uh, and share it on social media if you feel someone someone on your crew is lacking and could or is brand new to Battlefield and wants to learn the basics of the Battlefield game. Uh, that's it. Thanks for watching. See you later.